monthly standard interview with Motown legend Martha Reeves. Miss Reeves, how are you today? I'm so happy it's a shame. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that's... Just got back from New Orleans, and I'm working with uh, some beautiful musicians under the direction of uh, the Delphio uh, uh, Marcellus, a, a new a jazz uh, uh, adventure that I'm hoping turns out to be very, very positive. Oh, that so sounds I'm, I'm great. I'm back from New Orleans, and I'm fresh off the airlines, airport, and, and uh, jet lag. So you, you don't have to forgive me. I did get ready, though. All right. And when you joined Motown, you joined uh, as a secretary at first? God, you please don't know how irritated that does me when somebody says I was a secretary at Motown. I was invited there by William R. Stevenson. Okay. And I've told the story so many times, I thought everybody knew that I was singing in the 20 grand. I had won a contest at the Warfield Theater. Okay. And my reward was to sing three nights at the 20 grand, the world famous 20 grand. Yes. I remember seeing all of the top names in there. I was so thrilled when they finally let me work uh, in the in the uh, happy hour with uh, a trio that worked downstairs. We by man and his trio, uh, just three pieces of uh, instrumentation. But I was given three days uh, during the happy hour between eight and twelve to uh, sing uh, what I had won the contest with. I sang three songs, and um, it was just beautiful how. Uh, this man walked up to me after I was singing. You know, we sing to see can we meet Prince Charming's one day in our life. We want to sing and touch the heart of some man who will come and sweep us off our feet and ride off in the, uh, in the night on a white horse and our hero. So here I am singing, but after I sing, here comes this man approaching me. Very good looking man, smart as a whip. Give me a card and says, you have talent. Come to Hitsville, USA. I looked, took the car backstage and was disappointed because this man didn't hit on me. I just had, had to go on with the rest of my evening and change clothes and go home and beat, beat the clock because Dad said if I got there after 12 o'clock, the door would be locked. Don't come in his house after 12 o'clock. He don't care how old you are. I had just turned 21. Anyway, uh, I went to uh, Hitsville the next day. I quit my job at the cleaners at my dad's advice because living in his house, you had to have a job. Yes. So. When I went back to uh, talk to William R. Stevenson, I went to the doors of Motown and saw a lot of people standing out front waiting on an audition. I didn't know it was the day they had auditions. I went to the front desk, passed all those people that were out front because I had a card, a business card. I didn't tell you what was, what was impressive on that card. When I looked at it, there was a Barrett Strong who saved money on that card. There was a girl named Mary Wells who had approached Barry Gordy in that same 20 grand, but in the gold room where they played records and had sock hops, where you could take off your shoes and slide all over the floor because shoes weren't expensive then. And you could listen to records by new artists. So there was uh, Mary Wells and she approached Barry Gordy and sang Bye Bye Baby for him, for him to give it to Jackie Wilson, the only artist he was known for at the time, but she knew he was a record producer. And she, she, the timing was right. She was all of 14 years old. But when Barry heard her, he says, no, I'm going to make you the number one artist in the world. And he did. He, she was the first one that Barry produced that went to number one. And uh, my guy, my girl, were all written by Barry's very first artist, Smokey Robinson. They met over a book of poems. And Barry, with his ability on the piano, taught Smokey how to write songs like get a job, or shop around, or, uh, oh, I could name all the songs, but that would take all night. Yeah. Smokey was the best producer, and the first producer. He also rose to vice president. Let's and talk about time. your hits. My life has evolved around the people that were backstage, the ones that actually made the records. I got to know the Funk Brothers personally, and Motown had a knack of making music, and any producer could produce any artist that they had on any record they wanted to. So I can't say about my hits, because there are people that have sang my songs that they gave me. Yes. The producers liked. Yes. So I, I'd like to sit here and rant and rave about how long those are happening. How after they wrote Heat Wave, Come and Get These Memories, Nowhere to Run, Love Makes Me Foolish Things, and Jimmy Mack for us. They looked at the Supremes and went, Baby Love, come see about me. Oh, you know, so I'm, I'm a mixture and a, a product of a good family. Yes, you are. It was a thrill when Earl Van Dyke let me help produce one of the songs that they wanted me to sing. 
if you let me direct you on a song called Didn't You. He played an intro for me and he directed me how to sing and where to place my vocals and the timing for that particular ballad. And I was so thrilled to be taught by the musicians that were there. Okay. Sure, we had artist development. Sure, they taught us music theory. They taught us ball bills clubs from, with Charlie Atkins. We gave Mrs. Maxine Powell our uh, uh, time and attention to, to give us social graces because remember, we're the first bunch of people traveling on buses that were allowed to sit at the lunch counters in the South. We wow. We do that. We broke a lot of barriers by singing our music before segregated audiences and having people say, oh, take that barrier down. We want to do the monkey with everybody. Right. Because Mickey, Mickey's Monkey was our finale song. And the miracles were our star on yes. our first Motown Yes. It's a 94 night of drooling escapade, is all I can call it. We sat on that bus and rode. We had two hotel stays in three months because they didn't let us or uh, allow us to stay in some hotels. And other hotels, we couldn't really afford the number that we were on that bus. All new artists with a 14 piece band. But we came back and everybody's records had charted. So we're famous together. I can't really sit here and say, uh, Mark Reeves and the band those were the greatest. No, no, we're one of the greatest. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. What, a, what a roster. Still, who who was on the Motortown Review? Could you name all the artists? Yeah, I just did. Let me do it again. It's, uh, let's see, Stevie Wonder, uh, uh, The Miracles, Smokey the, and the Supremes, the, Supremes. the Contours, Kim Weston, Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell, The Spinners, uh, the Contours, because they tell the show up to you love me. They would do summer sauces and splits, and they were like. The best dancers, I guess, because they did aerobics and acrobats too. Oh, I'm uh, incredible! Did a, a great stride thing, but uh, the contours were the real dancers. Oh wow! Uh -huh. Now, did did the review go from coast to coast? It went across the world, around the world. We around the a, world. Had a, a Motown review in, in England, thanks to some lovely entertainment friends that we collaborated with and became friends with. And the next thing you know, we're invited to come to do a BBC special by Dusty Springfield. And uh, everybody became known in England. Yes. That's another long story. Yeah. <laughs> One thing we have to talk about before we go is your star. Uh, because uh, Martha Reeves uh, will be unveiling her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And when will that happen? It will happen in 2024, but what is the date? So, because there's people who want to go. Well, a lot of people have spent their time to visit MarthaReeves.net and see what it is all about and then set contributions so that it's now in the hands of the Chamber of Commerce of California. They have said, yes, we will have the star because they have the money in the bank. The payment for the star. There's money yet to be uh, to be collected for the reception and the actual party after party for the ceremony. But Chris Rowe is my management, and he's a wonderful person. He re he uh, received my uh, management ability along with collecting all of that money they're asking for. The price went up even from the last ones that were given, the awards that were given. Uh, in two and a half months, he raised the money. And he's still uh, actively through my webpage, MarthaReeves.net, collecting money. But that star is a, is a guaranteed uh, action for March 2024. March, March 2024. 2024. All and right. I pray to God that I live to see it happen. You, you will live to see it. Yeah. You will be there. Uh, and it, do you have an exact date in March of 2024? I would give it if I had it. I'm sure you would. No, but I okay. Don't, I can't do that. Well, stay the tuned. Will make the announcement, just like they made the initial announcement that I wasn't even aware of. When the when it came over the news that Martha Reeves and the Funkadelics and a few other people were going to get a star, uh, I was overwhelmed and I went crazy. I said, well, I didn't make any moves or ask anybody to do this. But then I found out later somebody was to uh, their advantage making the announcement to make it happen. And I'm glad that they thought of me, because I've dreamed of one day having a star. Every artist does. I've been in movies. I've attended all kinds of universities. I've got my degree in, in uh, my religious studies, and I also have my doctorate in humanity. And I'm working on myself. I've been in different universities. Motown was a university. Uh, uh, four years of, of straight knowledge. Well, actually, 10 years from 71 
to uh, 61 to, to 71. I was on Motown, under Motown Studios, under that contract. Yes. And so I'm, I'm very proud to say I'm a graduate, cum laude, of the Motown University because everything they had to teach, I learned, absorbed. Yes. So it's made us legendary. The ones that are lasting are the ones that are le legendary. The ones that the, the public loved, the public made us. I mean, uh, just appearing at the 20 grand when uh, I was an amateur and in the gold room during the happy hour, it led me to Pittsville, USA. And now uh, I just came back home from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yes. I'm also in the Rhythm and Blues Foundation. Yes. I also have been awarded by most of the governors and mayors of different states. I have keys to cities I hope to visit again. Yes. But it's all because of the Motown music and the gift that God gave me and my ability to sustain and reserve my mind, my body, and my spirit. Thank Jesus. you. Of course. Jesus Christ. Thank you. <laughs> and this has been Rock and Roll Hall of Famer music legend Martha Reeves. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan.